Hi, this is an example problem on electron energy transition in hydrogen. So in this problem, uh, we are going to be using the Bohr model, which has the energy level diagram for hydrogen seen right over here, to be able to solve all of these questions. Now for each of these, A through D, we're going to consider that the electron in the hydrogen atom starts in the n equals 3 level. So right here. Let's just go ahead and use the Bohr formula to confirm that that is the uh, energy for the n equals 3 state. So looking at the Bohr model, here's our equation. En is equal to minus 13.6 eV z squared over n squared. z is the number of protons. So you could have like two protons in a single electron, three protons, etc. Always one electron. Uh, but this is hydrogen. There's one proton. So we can write this as e to the n is equal to minus 13.6 eV divided by n squared. And if we want to calculate e3, we can put in the number n equals 3, square it. And indeed, it comes out to minus 1.51 eV as the diagram shows. Now notice that for this energy level diagram, we've chosen the zero point here to be at the very highest level. Um, and so uh, all of the energies are referenced to that level. Lower than zero, they're all negative. Okay. Uh, in part A, we are asked, if the electron makes a quantum jump, quantum jump to the ground state, what is the energy of the emitted photon. So in this case, we're thinking here, okay, we're starting right here, level three. And then we're going to go all the way down to the ground state. In other words, we're making this particular transition, which is part of the Lyman series. We need to calculate that energy difference. That's the energy of the emitted photon. So we're going to go ahead and look at this. Uh, the energy of the photon we call this delta E equals HF in this case. That's the photon energy, right? It's going to be equal to uh, the highest level, which in this case is E3, minus the lowest level, which is E1. Again, the ground state, that is N equals 1. So E3, we have minus 1.51 EV minus E1, negative 13.6 EV. When we put that into the calculator, we get a photon energy, HF, that is equal to 12.09 eV. All right, part B asks us, what is the longest wavelength photon that can be emitted? All right, so let's uh, erase these ones here. Now for part B, we're looking for the longest wavelength. Now, we got to go back and think of Einstein's formula for the energy of a photon. Well, we just wrote it up there above. E equals HF, which is equal to HC over lambda, of course, using this equation. And we can see that the uh, longest wavelength is going to be the one with the least energy, so the least energetic photon. So if we're going to draw from n equals 3 to the next energy level, that's going to be the lowest energy photon. So that's going to be the photon from n equals 3 to n equals 2. And all we got to do is again calculate that energy and we can convert it to a wavelength. The energy of the photon here is going to be E3 minus E2, which is negative 1.51 eV minus a negative 3.4 eV, which comes out to a value of 1.89 eV. And now we just want to convert this to wavelength. So let's go ahead and use uh, the equation that we have here. We can go up and say from, from just above that the, uh, let me write it like this, hc over lambda is equal to e, right? That's from this here. Now we want to solve for lambda. Let's take the reciprocal of both sides. And finally, we'll go ahead and we'll solve for lambda by multiplying by hc on both sides. 
Now if we put in the numbers that we have, we've got H, and let's go look up H real quick. Here it is. We're going to use the form with EV times seconds, 4.136 times 10 to the minus 15th. Multiply by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, all divided by the photon energy that we just calculated above, 1.89 EV. We can cancel a few things out here. EVs are gone, seconds. We're left with meters. And the calculation comes out to 6.57 times 10 to the minus 7th meters, or if we convert that to nanometers, that's 657 nanometers. Now I realize I put that transition in the wrong spot. It's actually this one right here. It's from n equals 3 to 2, and it's that first uh, shortest energy um, transition in the Balmer series there. All right, let's keep going here. So for, num for part C, C asks us, the electron absorbs a photon and transitions to the n equals 7 level. What is the photon's energy and wavelength? Okay, so in this case, we're going to uh, go from n equals 3 to n equals 7. And so uh, n equals 7, that's 5. It's one of these up here. Notice how when you get the larger n, they all start to bunch up because of the equations 1 divided by n squared. Uh, now, all we got to do is take the difference. Again, this is an absorption. The electron's gaining energy, and therefore it absorbs a photon to go up to a higher level. But we still calculate the energy the same way as before. We're going to go ahead and look at uh, the energy of the photon. It's going to be equal to the difference in the high level, which is E7, minus the difference in the low level, which is E3. E7 is not labeled, so let's go ahead and calculate what it's equal to. Minus 13.6 EV divided by N, which is 7, squared. That comes out negative 0 0.278. EV. And so you can see as n becomes a bigger and bigger number, we're dividing by something larger and larger, this is going to approach zero. All right, so the photon energy in this case, uh, it is equal to negative 0 0.278 EV, and E3, we recall, is equal to a negative 1.51 EV. And uh, when we do that computation, we end up with HF is equal to 1.23 EV. So there's your photon energy. And to figure out the wavelength, we do the same thing as before. We can use the formula that we had right up here again. So in this case, lambda is equal to hc over the energy and hc well that's the same old thing we had before here let's go ahead and just copy that and the only difference here is we need to use the energy for this problem which is 1.23 ev and when we put that into our calculator, we get a value equal to 1.009 times 10 to the minus 6th meters, or 1,009 nanometers. So that's the uh, wavelength for this problem, this part. And finally, we're going to look at part D here. So part D asks, what is the longest wavelength photon capable of ionizing the electron? Well, in this case, we need to put in enough energy to go from n equals 3, not just to the seventh level. we got to get all the way up to infinity. So we're going to be looking at this now. We want to go from 
3, all the way up to infinity. Now, a higher uh, energy photon could also bump out an electron and, you know, give it extra kinetic energy once it escapes the atom. In fact, once you're above zero, the electron is free out here and it can have any energy value. It's no longer quantized because it's no longer trapped by the proton. But we are looking at the uh, minimum energy electron, so we just got to go from n equals 3 up to, to, to 0, minus 1.5 eV to 0, and then we'll have ionized it. So in a sense, the ionized energy from energy, the ionization energy from level n equals 3, you can see what it's going to be. It's 1.5 eV to go from that level to zero. So we need to get a uh, photon. They're asking again, what is the longest wavelength capable? So same idea. In this case, the ionization energy we just saw to go from level n equals three, it's going to be 1.51 eV, and we need to figure out the wavelength corresponding to that. So same equation as before, hc over e. We can use the same thing again and simply update the energy for the ionization energy for this particular part. And when we put that into calculator, we get a value equal to 8.22 times 10 to the minus 7th meters, or 822 nanometers. So a little bit more energetic, a little bit shorter wavelength than the photon in part D. There we go.